today we are all home. We all sound like a pack of barking seals. So that started first with Owen and then Casey got it and then Alex got it and I've got it too. Um, so I had to get somebody to fill in for me very last minute because I was planning on going to church today and just solo, just to still teach my lesson. But Alex had been up all night with the kids so he requested that I stay so that he could get some rest. So I thought I would take care of some keto meal prep and get some things ready to go. You know, even though I'm not feeling very good and have no makeup on, I thought I would act out Meredith's situation from her man cold video where everybody's sick but I gotta still keep doing stuff it's not that bad I don't I'm not that bad and he's not that bad but it is just funny how us as as women and mothers even if we're under the weather we still we still get stuff done which apparently is why I thought it was the perfect time to clean out my fridge and get everything organized instead of resting because that's how smart I am. So, got a turkey on the go in the crock pot. I'm gonna finish it off in the oven to get a crispy skin. Doing some hard boiled eggs and just prepping some veggies and making a keto veggie dip. And I have my four liter or gallon jug of water on the go with amino acids, which I need to find out if those kick yet a ketosis. I don't really know. Anyway. I just finished doing some hard boiled eggs and I know what you're thinking you're like Kelly I hate peeling hard boiled eggs and I know I know it sucks but I've got a couple of tips and tricks now my vegan friends will say Kelly an egg is just a chicken's period why are you eating that but I say they are the perfect combination of protein and fat very convenient very portable and delicious so let's get started my tips that I like to use are lots of salt in the water and also actually baking soda in the water um, if you remember sometimes I don't but the biggest most helpful tip is actually to peel them as soon as they're done well as, as soon as you can manage uh, after they've finished boiling. So I'm gonna try to get some footage of this. I don't know. I need to get a gorilla pod to get some, you know, different angled footage, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, just a sec. All right, so what I've done is I've drained the eggs. They've just come off of the stove and I shake them until they're all crushed. Okay, and then they are warm to the touch, but if you can see, they're already really easily peeling off because they're still warm and see so then they just the peel comes right off and it's not a pain in the butt and if there is one that's giving me a little bit of trouble just, there's that little membrane and you just grab it and then everything comes right off and so that was six eggs and what was that less than a minute then I just give them a rinse and I have no idea how long eggs are good in the fridge for once they've been peeled but uh, they never usually last that long anyway <laughs> little behind the scenes footage for you. This was my MacGyver way of getting some video footage. That is my dollar store car mount, which sticks nicely to the side of my Brita. And some duct tape because the top secure thing, whatever that's called, got broken off, so. Oh, look all the dishes I have to do. <laughs> I've been making bone broth a lot lately and so every time we have chicken I'll take the leftovers and put them in a big stock pot uh, with filtered water is what the recipe recommended and just lots of spices and I'll go over the spices that I use uh, for this turkey. 
which is pretty much the same as what I use for this the chicken stock and carrots onions and celery in the stock pot with the water and I just let it go and go and go and go and then strain it off and keep it for a few days in the fridge and anything that I have left over I'll freeze in an ice cube tray to keep smaller portions so that I can use it as needed for recipes so I'm gonna go over what I did for seasoning this turkey I had some bone broth chicken stock that I put in the bottom and then I coated the top part with just some butter rubbed that in and then uh, these are some of the spices that I use pink Himalayan sea salt which yay you can get at the dollar store which I'm sure means it's super high quality not that it matters I don't know does it matter do I need to buy eight dollar pink sea salt and then some garlic and this is my go-to it's not a paid sponsored video or anything obviously you can see how many subscribers I have it's not a paid sponsorship this is flavor god and this is the dynamite seasoning and so it's got really good um really good just lower sodium I mean not that that matters super much because you we're eating pretty much all whole foods anyway. So Flavor God's Dynamite, and I did some diced onion, and then I've got all these, you can see what they're labeled there, just threw them all together. And then that's the apple cider vinegar that I have in the background, which is wonderful for trapping the fruit flies from the avocados that I have on the counter. So you just put that sticky saran wrap over top and poke holes in it and it catches them like a dream. I just did a rub put that in so I'm going to keep that in the slow cooker for a while today and then later on today I will transfer it into the oven where we will get a crispy skin on top yay so for this veggie dip that I did I did full fat sour cream and full fat mayo and full fat cream cheese all mixed together and then I used that flavor god dynamite seasoning again uh, some more garlic powder Himalayan sea salt and I chopped up some green onions uh, like the the green part near the top and then I put in some parmesan petals and some really finely diced feta cheese so all of that is all mixed together it's gonna smell like feet but it's gonna taste really good with the veggies that I am chopping up and preparing so that they are ready to go and easily accessible which is for me the key to success otherwise I'm throwing out all the unused vegetables because I didn't prepare them properly. This is actually a Tupperware container and I used to think oh whatever super expensive not necessary but I'm telling you what it keeps the vegetables fresh a lot longer those have been in there for longer than I'd like to admit just keeps them really good to go for a lot longer so I'm I, I don't think it matters what brand it is if you can find them the thing that is really good about it is it's got these vent holes which you can adjust and they give you a guide for what vegetables need what setting so it is pretty good and I I have really enjoyed it and this is how I know that it works really well I was just going through the vegetables to see if there was anything that needed to get thrown out or if it was still good or whatever and this cucumber slice I put in there at least a few days ago and normally like a couple of days after there's been a cut cucumber it's like disgusting and slimy but it's still good to go so I'm a fan but this is the dip that's all good to go like I said it's gonna smell like feet but it will be delicious okay. another thing I'm doing is I'm gonna make a big green salad I'm gonna use up some of these veggies and I do find that with keto it is more so just the my salads have been kind of green and white these days so one tip or trick that I use for romaine lettuce is I will break it up by hand instead of chopping it with a knife I know it's a little bit more time-consuming and annoying but I find that the the romaine lettuce will last longer and won't brown on the edges as much if you're not cutting it with a knife. Okay, so I'm still mid salad prep and I've decided I'm gonna keep 
the greens in a separate bowl and I'm going to use another one of those fridge smart containers to have the mix-ins that I'll add each time I have a salad so that way it should last a few days and I'm just wondering does anybody have any idea what this might be it's typically something that might not get used by everyone it's actually the stock of broccoli so I peel it and dice it up and then you can just put it right in with the salad and it's really really good and gives some crunch okay I just took it out of the crock pot it's been in there pretty much all day and I've uh, just been basting it a little bit with a little bit more butter on top just uh, to get the top crispy and then we should be good to go let's see where we're at I think it's gonna be pretty good pretty soon browning up nicely so I'll check the temperature in a little bit and we should be all set a few moments later done and done so my hope is that because I started it in the slow cooker it'll be nice and moist and then finished it off in the oven for some crispiness Here's hoping it's yummy.